Thanks very much, and thanks for the uh, invitation. I'm not going to talk too much about the mechanics of MDA, but I want to draw a few lessons. And actually, I'm just going to throw out some things that hopefully will upset some of you, and hopefully you might come back at me for some of these in the panel discussion. Um, but I'm a physician. Basically, I've listened to a whole lot of water and sanitation this morning, so now you're going to hear about, a bit about medicine and public health, uh, just to get that balance right. But, but just, to, uh, just to start, I want to just show a few photos of MDA in DRC. You get the community together. Uh, you get the community to organize themselves. Uh, you start dishing out the tablets. And you make sure the village chief takes the tablets. That's the mechanics of MDA. What's quite interesting is that actually these photographs are more than 30 years old. When I was, for 17 years, I worked in the, in the, uh, uh, in the forest of what was then Zaire, now DRC. And when we managed to get some Levamisole, which is not the best, but the only drug that was available at the time for STH, this is what we did. The first year after we got it, we started distributing it. So I was also the district medical officer, if you like, or médecin chef de zone. And we, we had some lessons we learned from this MDA, which I think is, which is interesting. We didn't do the MDA without doing something, at least, for sanitation and water. Yeah, even doctors can think about water and sanitation. You'll be glad to know. Um, we got the communities involved because I refused to give them any water until every house had a latrine. I refused to give them any tablets until they had their water source at least protected. And so the community had to do all that. And I remember once they kept going back and saying, this guy will not dig uh, his latrine. I said, no tablets. So eventually what well, the community decided, hey, we want these tablets. So they went and dug his latrine so he had one by his house. I don't think he ever used it, but that's another point. The other thing was uh, we didn't have donated drugs. You know, I had to buy the tablets out of the profits of the hospital, which is not very easy. But one of the things we did do was some cross-sectoral uh, collaboration. We, we worked with people in the community who had different capacities, different roles in the community to get this community project going. But I think this is important, and this is the first, uh, or second, the first thing is to get the community involved. The second thing is this was integrated. Because I was the medical, district medical officer, it all had to be integrated within the primary health care system. That's really important if we're talking about the health of the community. We have to get the health people there. And when we talk about strengthening health systems, the fact that you've got the community involved the fact that you've got the very peripheral health service personnel. Some people call them the frontline health facility. It's your, your health post or your, your, well, here it was a health post. Sometimes it's a health center. Those staff are involved. If everyone is involved, then this is actually strengthening the health system from the bottom up. We often look at, and we do our research, and we, we, we start from the top. Or we should train some people, have some master's degrees, have some PhDs, and so on. Actually, the work starts at the bottom. And if we just think by creating a few master's degrees or whatever, we're going to have anything going on at the community, we're deluding ourselves. We have to be integrated within the health service. We have to get the community involved. And uh, we have to make sure we're working with the health system. In the 90s, I moved to the Central African Republic. And here we set up uh, an onco, onco-sarcasis, or river blindness control program, which depends entirely on mass drug administration. It shouldn't do, but it does. We, this was a program within the ministry. I was technical advisor to the ministry. We managed to do a very rapid scale up, had some very rapid results. Everyone was happy. But it was a parallel system. I don't say it was a vertical system because it wasn't entirely vertical. We did a lot of work at the community level as well. But there were parallel people doing other things at the community as well. We weren't always integrated. Why? Because we had our separate financial resources. I had a vehicle that I could drive around and supervise where some of the other ministry people didn't have that. 
our, our coordinators had mopeds to go around. You know, it was, it was a parallel system. And there were several parallel systems. There was a leprosy parallel system. Uh, the, the, you know, the, there was a sleeping sickness parallel system. We had all these different parallel systems that even though perhaps they were a little bit horizontal in the way they were, they were done, in some ways they were vertical in the way that they, they were administered. And it was very nominal integration. I used to always visit the, the main health centers whenever I went around on supervision and asked about my, uh, you know, what, my, what the guys were doing. And sometimes they had no idea because they just went off and did their own thing. The other thing we have to look at when we do research and planning and supervision, we have to remember that NTDs and diseases of neglected populations or neglected people, they're also suffering from neglected health services. The NHS, you've probably heard of the NHS. This is a slightly different NHS. I don't think the politicians would like this, but we're actually talking about neglected health services. Neglected people have neglected health services and we put in structures within health services that we think might function. So sometimes our operational research is not actually centered and focused with appropriate implementation. We must build this bottom-up process. We've heard about data today and how we use data, so I won't go into that, but we have to make our data relevant to the communities who are collecting it. They have to learn how to use it. We need to make sure when we're doing supervision uh, that, that this is an educational process. It's not a criti critical process. This is just to help the process along. Because what we're trying to make sure is that the people we're trying to reach with our MDA are the people who must not be left behind and very often are left behind by the politicians. These are people without voices and so on. I'm talking about the rural areas. I know urban areas, th there are different problems. But I'm talking particularly about the 50% or so people who live in rural areas. Should we think outside the box? Well, I'd rather we just enlarge our box. As we look about WASH, well, WASH and diarrhea disease, we've heard about feces, flies, hands, food, water, STH is the same thing, but we have to watch about the feet if we're going to try and do something for ankylostomes. We've heard today that, you know, basically forget about the, 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 the water because it's water contact, not the water you drink. But, you know, we need to make sure as we look at all the different diseases that we're trying to, to get at, that we actually are tackling everything. Even skin care. I've been, uh, recently I was, I was uh, chair of the Global Alliance for Elimination of LF, and part of the LF uh, is looking after feet. You saw uh, this morning in the, in the leprosy presentation, it wasn't a patient with leprosy, it was a patient with LF. That patient needs foot care. This should all come into our concept of water, what we're using water for, because we have to make sure that we're keeping uh, wounds properly uh, cared for. But we also have to think outside the box. We have to think a little bit more in terms of patient care. You know, I'm, I'm a physician, so I think patients. I also think childhood health and development. You know, we're so busy looking at, at, at some of the projects that we're doing, we forget that sometimes the end user, if you like, the client, is the child who actually is not developing normal, normally because his education and his physical development is inhibited by his worm infestations. We also actually have to think about some of the non-infectious diseases of poverty. Diabetics need the same foot care as LF patients and leprosy patients. We've had some programs where we've had the three programs running together. It's not an infectious co cause. Podoconiosis has been in and now it's out of the NTD. It's not a, it, it's not a parasitic disease. It's not infected disease, infected disease, but it's very much like LF. So we have to be looking at some of these uh, other, uh, other aspects of how water should be used, including in foot care. But of course, all these things need the communities to be involved. Now, there's a lot of community-based rehabilitation prog programs which are really related to community development or inclusive development. And what I think is really important is that these volunteers should be well-known in the community. They should be the people who are actually what I call gossiping good health. We need far more people in the communities who know how to gossip good health. 
they're just there talking. You tell them what the messages are, and they just, it just comes out uh, in, in, in that way. Now, it's a question whether this is actually an African pro uh, proverb or not, because if you look it up, some people say, no, it's not an African proverb. But wherever it, wherever it comes from, it's a great proverb. We're looking forward to 2030, the SDGs. You know, from the health point of view, we're looking at SDGs 3, particularly 3.3 .3 and 3.8. From, the, from the, 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 the sanitation point of view, we're looking at, at, at SDG 6. But the thing is, we have some, uh, some goals to achieve by 2030. We have a few years to do it. We can do some quick fixes. But if we are really going to get that development going, for 2030 and really have something established by 2030, the only way we can actually do this is by working together and moving together uh, in, 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 uh, as we seek to carry out this, this development. Thanks very much.